This time on Pedalbox, it's Easter Sunday and it feels fitting to begin the resurrection of the golf. Yes, the time has come to rebuild Golf Engine after we accidentally dropped all of the oil in an unintended flush along the M4. So we have had a very quick cheeky look inside the sump previously and the news is bad. Uh, at least two of the bearings are completely minced, there is a lot of glitter in the oil and generally it's looking pretty sorry for itself. So the only solution for this is going to be pull the engine and rebuild the whole thing. So we've got new crank to go in, obviously new bearings to go in, but we're going to pull everything apart and really inspect it because this engine hasn't been apart properly um, in at least as long as I've owned it. We've had the head off once to do a head gasket, um, but that's basically it. So this is going to be interesting and it's done probably the better part of 10,000 more miles since it did that, a number of trips to the Nürburgring, a couple of track days. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting experience to get this out. Fortunately, I had some help getting the front of the car apart to pull the engine. James, who had the 944 Porsche that we saw quite a few times last year, was around and he helped me get everything undone so we could get the engine out. Don't forget to check out shop.pedalbox.show for our range of merch and patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show to support us from as little as a dollar a month. Thanks very much to James for helping me get everything disconnected and getting this out of the car. We just dropped it in here on a tire and some mats overnight. Now I'm gonna start pulling the other bits off, starting with the exhaust, because if we're gonna lift this up and get anything off, having this on the back makes it a real pain to spin it around in what is really a fairly small garage. And I've already taken all the bottom studs off. All of the nuts came loose bar one, that pulled the stud with it, and believe it or not, that is a known issue. So next up is to just remove all of the top stud nuts and with them off we should be able to just pop the exhaust off. Now I can't remember why but on this engine it doesn't have a winching point on the very back of the block. Uh, I think there is a bracket that you meant to screw on, I don't have it, so we fabricated up this piece of quarter inch plate which did sterling service and that's just uh, an 8mm hole, 10mm hole for a little bit of um, adjustability and a 12 mil on the top so that we could just lift it up off the back of here. And now, I think this should be loose. Ah. That's the exhaust off and I've put my little uh, plate back on so that we can lift the engine and move it around. Now there's a bunch more bits I want to take off this. I'm going to get rid of this mount off the back of here. I want to try and split the gearbox off as well, which is probably easier said than done. I'm also going to take the oil cooler off because there's no point having that flapping around. Um, and generally, pull a few more bits off the engine. First to come off was the oil cooler sandwich plate, which I added during lockdown in 2020. If you haven't watched that episode already, you can click the link at the top and have a look back at all of the work that I did on the Golf over that summer. Next up, we pulled the alternator, tensioner and belt off, which looked like it was in pretty good condition. And then finally managed to take the intake runners off so that the head was clear on both sides. Now the alert along, you will notice that we actually took the intake off before we lifted the engine out, and that was just so we could get better access to the two mounts. So the one that goes on this side bolts onto these two bolts under here, underneath the inlet runners, so that's currently off as well. Now you'll also notice the major mistake, or at least the major problem that we had with the intake coming off, and that is three of the bolts on the intake runners actually snapped off, so we're going to have to drill them out, get some new bolts and do, do it that way. Otherwise, Basically everything came off perfectly fine. So we're doing reasonably well on taking apart what we need to to get into the bottom of this. As I say, the next up is taking off the gearbox. That's the next major thing that we need to do so we can get this in onto an engine stand and then we can have a look in the bottom a lot easier rather than craning around underneath the engine. But before I do that, I'm going to indulge myself a little bit and I'm going to take this rocker cover off and have a look underneath it because I am extremely curious to see just 
how bad it is under there. And of course it's not a 13 mil, I should know better, it's a 10, and hey, I even have a 10 mil to hand. So I'm just gonna whiz this off now, and we'll see what we find underneath. I'm expecting it to be pretty bad, and there to be evidence of bearing material in the oil, considering how long it was running on very little oil, and it will have probably launched a bunch of it all around the top of the head as well. So we're also gonna have to do a big old flush to make sure we get all of the um, all the metal, all the bearing material, and everything else out from the top of the engine and all of the um, oilways as well. So now the question, how bad is it? I'm actually kind of surprised. Maybe it's just because it's all fallen all the way back down inside the engine again. But like, but that doesn't actually look as terrible as I was expecting it to. Well, I might have been extremely lucky because I actually don't see, I, I'm wiping around in a couple of the valleys down here just to see if I can see anything. And I'm pulling up obviously oil residue but I'm not actually getting any, any bits of bearing material coming off. So I might have got really, really lucky on that front and not actually damaged the head. Obviously, it's going to get flushed anyway when it all comes off. So we'll see what it's really like inside there. But yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised with how good that looks. <laughs> I'll take that as a win. Well, now it's on the engine stand. We can get the last few bolts out of the sump and have a look inside. Now, as I said, we have had this sump off before to take a look inside and the results were not pretty. We just had a quick look at the oil and everything was terrible. And yep, it hasn't gone away. There is still a really upsetting amount of uh, of uh, bearing material in the bottom of this. Safe to say, this is not what you want your oil pan to look like when you take it off. There's still a little bit of residual oil in it that didn't drain out previously, but there's also a lot of metal in it that also didn't drain out when we did it down at Ignition Motorsports on the way to the MOT. Of course, not that we had an MOT because we had no oil in the engine. Well, as most of you will be able to tell, that's not looking good. Oil definitely should not look like Goldschlager, um, and that's basically what we have. Although it's not gold, it's bearing material, which is definitely a worse trade. Not that I particularly want to run the engine with a bunch of Goldschlager in it either. I think that would probably have similar catastrophic uh, results, but at least I would have some Goldschlager. So you can see there are some fairly large chunks of it in here as well. Oh, that is a massive piece right there. That bit's huge. So we need to continue tearing into the engine. I'm going to take a couple of the big end caps off and have a look at the bearings underneath, and I am not expecting good things. And as expected, that looks pretty horrific. Those bearings are definitely toast, as is the crank, so we're going to have to pull an awful lot more out of this engine yet.
Well, this is definitely not the result that we wanted, but it was the result that we were expecting. And this little cup of oil has a full layer of bearing material all the way across the bottom of it. Obviously, that's not even all of it that came out. As you saw in the pictures, there is lots of it that's just been mangled through the sides of the uh, big end bearings, or the big ends, and the bearings have just mashed their way out. So the middle set, definitely done for. So it'd be new bearings, a new crank, um, possibly new rods, and I think I have a good line on that coming up. Uh, friends over at United Motorsport, they have a crank and rods in stock, hopefully, that we're going to be able to put into this when we rebuild it. Now, while we're rebuilding it, I want to try and clean up some of this because it looks really, really bad, and it's rusty, and everything, everything and anything that could be on this and flaking off is flaking off. So it'd be nice to get this looking a little bit nicer for when it goes back in, show it a little bit of love after, frankly, all the abuse that this engine has had. Now, if you'd like to help support put this back together, as well as all of our other projects, you can go to shop.pedalbox.show and check out our t-shirts. We've got long sleeve, short sleeve, uh, hoodies, beanies, all sorts of things, as well as stickers. You can go over there. And if you'd like to support us more directly, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow and support us from as little as a dollar a month. All our tiers above $5 get access onto our Discord server, where we have a lot more pictures that we put in and general chat about what we're doing and where we're going if we're out and about. There's currently a bunch of pictures going up on this being torn down, as well as some more gruesome pictures from inside here when we first had a quick look in. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time when we'll probably not be rebuilding this and we'll be working back on the kit car.